Well, as we all know, it's the 75th anniversary of the founding of the NHS today. So I thought, what better way to market than bring two people into the studio who basically helped me out of Charing Cross Underground Station when, uh, as I put it, I had my fall. Or do I just say fell over? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, about 20 minutes after it happened, um, three members of the London Ambulance Service arrived and two of them are here with me today. Poppy and Faye, welcome. It's good to see you again. A little bit different from the last time <laughs> we yeah. met when I was basically sitting on a chair thinking, oh my God, how am I going to get out of this place? And you all arrived. And my first thought was, three young women. That's interesting. How are they going to get me out of here? Um, obviously, every, every, every call you make is different. When you walked down the stairs into the underground station and saw me there, what, how much did you know of what had happened, Poppy? Um, so we kind of get a very brief kind of explanation as to what we're going to. So we got escalator fall in the station. I think my first thought, I'm not sure about Faye, was that you might have fallen down the escalator. Yeah, some newspaper so, wrote that I'd fallen down the escalator, which I think would have been rather more serious than yeah. what happened, what actually happened. So I think I was firstly just relieved that you were at the top and you were speaking, you're OK, we gave you some pain relief. I guess we weren't really thinking about the extrication in that minute, but luckily the TFL staff helped us, so we were fine. And Faye, you're the driver, yeah. which I think must be one of the best jobs in the world, it's driving so an ambulance, because you can basically go as fast as you like and everyone has to get out of the way. Does that always happen, though? No, and obviously in London City it's a bit more harder, I suppose, but um, it is really fun, especially when you're learning to do it. Um, yeah, not everybody moves. Uh, people, so a lot of people just freeze and don't really know what to do, but... Yeah, it's good. I mean, when I had you in the back, I was thinking, oh, my God, I don't want to go over speed bumps too fast because, like, you're already in a lot of pain. You'd have felt it so much more in the back as well. So, yeah. Um, one of the things I remember is that I had to be transferred from the chair to some sort of wheelchair contraption. And every time my leg was moved, because at that point we didn't know what... I, I, I assumed I'd broken the femur rather than the hip. And I think that's what you all thought at the time as well. And so I had to be transferred from this this normal chair onto this wheelchair contraption. And you produce this tubes. For, I assume it's like laughing gas. And snorks, yeah. Is it, is it really, and yeah. it really did help. And then when I got, eventually when I got into the ambulance, I had to be transferred onto this sort of bed thing. And I remember saying to Nicole, your colleague, I can't do this, I can't do this. The la the, and she was very, very cool and said, no, you really can. Just take some more gas. <laughs> and, and I kept so I was sort of breathing it in as much as I could. And she was right. Eventually, it did happen. But do you get people who just, for whatever re well, presumably for pain reasons, they just can't do what you want them to do? Yeah, that does happen. I mean, Entonox is very effective, or it tends to be. Um, but if it doesn't work so well, there are other methods of pain relief. We can do kind of intravenous or something along those lines. But at the end of the day, if someone can't move, we're not going to force them. So sometimes mm. it's a bit a matter of rolling onto like a pat slide to get them onto a bed. And we usually find a way. Well, you did, and, uh, and, it, and it did work. And, and then, of course, I said, well, where are you going to take me? And I just assumed that it would be to... You, you were assigned to one hospital, but apparently no. you're not. You, you, can, you take people to where, where there's space. And uh, I think originally you thought you'd take me to University College Hospital. Was it U University Yeah, College? UCH, yeah. yeah. Um, in Warren Street. I thought, well, that's quite a long way away. And I was thinking, well, if people have to come and visit me, that's a, that's a long way. So can we go to St Thomas's? And then I think Nicole said that's often quite busy at the weekends. But anyway, it turned out there was nobody in A&E. So that, yeah. that's where you took me. And when I had a conversation with one of the doctors, I'd been there about 20 minutes, and another doctor appeared. And he said, oh, we've got a nice patient here. And I said to him, what do you mean? Do you get horrible patients? And he said, yeah, about half of them. And I thought, that's appalling. And I've, sometimes you read stories in the newspapers about how ambulance crews are particularly under pressure from people who ought to know better. I mean, how often does that kind of bad behaviour happen to you? Um, it, do you know what? It probably happens quite often, but 
I mean, especially when we were a three woman crew, um, sometimes we were belittled because we were all girls or when there's just like two girls on a crew, um, some people will belittle you. And because we were all quite young as well, um, that's another thing a lot of people like will think they know better. But you just you just kind of get on with it, really. You don't, don't take anything personal from it. But when you decided to do this for a career, and maybe when you're going through your training, was this something that you were almost taught to expect, or was it a shock to you that people would behave in this manner? We did have like a, it's called like a conflict resolution day where people come in and like they um, basically train us what to do in like certain situations. But I just thought, oh, like, you know, this won't be much of a co- occurrence, but verbal abuse is unfortunately quite often a thing. And have you, have you seen much of that, Poppy? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think when me and Faye were working together as well, we experienced a bit of it. Yeah. Like Faye said, with the three-woman crew, and especially because we were all so young. Because mm. you're all, what, in your mid, early to mid-20s? Yeah, early 20s, yeah. yeah. I mean, going back to the underground station... Again, I mean, I, I distinctly remember what I was thinking. How, how are they going to lift me out of here? <laughs> and have you ever had a situation where you thought, well, actually, it might have been good to have a sort of 16 stone male to, to help lift? Or are there always people who can help, like the London Underground staff did? Um, sometimes you have to call out for an extra crew. Um, but I just think no matter what, you've got to get that patient out so it's going to happen regardless yeah. like you've got to get them out so you have to come to some sort of conclusion in the end but yeah extra crews like this is this something you can do but then again you could be waiting a little while for an extra crew to come so yeah it's just luckily neither of you had to lift me because the London <laughs> underground staff who are absolutely yeah. brilliant yeah. i have to say uh they did it with nicole but i don't know if you remember this but there were people pushing past the whole time so yeah. coming out of the underground station, it's about 20 or 30 steps up to uh, the Strand exit. And there were people trying to push by. I was thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. Some people <laughs> don't care until it's them. And that's yeah. Just, yeah. It's just, just weird, wasn't it? What, what, what's the best bit of job satisfaction you get out of working uh, for, for the London Ambulance Service? Because it's a high-pressure job, isn't it? So a few weeks ago, I went to a bath, and that was such a lovely job because it ended on such a high night. Um, yeah, it was just really nice to know how that job ended. So not every job is a sad job. Some people just see relieved seeing you there. Um, so that's really nice to know that somebody sees you and they instantly kind of feel comforted. But you must have, I mean, obviously that was a positive experience. You must have to attend terrible scenes of sort of car accidents sort of yeah. where i mean you, maybe you don't know what you're going to find and it, it's i mean how how often do those sorts of things occur they do they happen fairly often but i think it's i mean for example me and Faye went to our first cardiac arrest together that was a very obviously emotionally draining job to go to but we spoke to our manager afterwards she was really supportive um I think it's good to just, you have to kind of disconnect yourself when you go home, which in some cases is impossible, but you get better at doing it the more you see. And when you look at TV programmes like Casualty, I mean, those of us who don't work in the health service, all all our knowledge comes from watching programmes (laughs) like that, which I imagine they are a very exaggerated form of what you do. But do you sometimes, maybe you don't watch them, but maybe you just think, well, that's not how it is. They should have done their research better. I haven't watched Casualty, but I've seen, like, Ambulance and 24 Hours and Only, and I think that's kind of, like, how it... Obviously, they show, like, the really, like, big extreme scenes, which isn't everyday stuff, but they're the scenes that you do take home with you. Um, But, yeah, I think they kind of relate well to the work we do. And, I mean, you're the driver, but presumably you have similar medical training to your colleagues oh so it was just that job that i drove oh, just that one. so right. like you take it in turns so one you attend the next you drive um so your job i was driving um so yeah it's like you just take it in turns really which which bit do you like best poppy um i mean Depends i do the like the driving it's, <laughs> it's fun that's going what i would on want to do lights, sirens everyone moving out of your way it is a lot of fun i won't lie but um it's good attending as well because like i attended your job and it was nice to do the helping. Yeah. Uh, and 
obviously in the last year there's been a lot of coverage of the pressures on the ambulance service, waiting times and whatever. It seems from the outside as though things have eased off a little bit now, is that right? Um, I'd say so. It's kind of a day-by-day -day thing though. You'll have a really busy day and you'll have a not-so-busy day. So sometimes you are still waiting in hospitals for a while, but other times it's kind of like your case where it was in and out very quick. So it, I can't really say as a generalisation. Do you genuinely enjoy the job? I mean, because it's not something that you can just, you go home, you can't just leave it at the door, can you? I mean, there must be days when you've experienced things that you, you can't stop thinking about. Yeah, I mean, being me and Poppy are both so young as well, it's like a lot to take on at this age. You, it does mature you um, at quite a young age. You know, I've seen stuff which I didn't expect Dad to see, like, so soon on. Um, so, yeah, I do really enjoy the job. Um, I'm excited to, as I learn more, more things I'll see. I'm really excited for the future and to carry on in this career, definitely. Well, thank you both for coming in and give my regards to Nicole. And um, thank you very much for what you did for me. Thank you for no. letting us come. <laughs> thank you.